Welcome to the five dumbest things on Wall Street, where this week marks the fifth anniversary of Lehman's bankruptcy. You know what? Might want to get something nice for Dick Full, okay? Maybe something from Tiffany's or Nathan's Famous. Either one will work. All right, number five, Carl's not so sour grapes. Seriously, dumbest fans, we simply cannot suppress our amusement over Carl Icahn's Tom Joad impersonation following his so-called Dell defeat, where the fruit of his wrath was over 70 million smackers, according to the WSJ. Our favorite line in Carl's concession speech, the one which most reminded us of Steinbeck's tale of itinerant woe, was when he told shareholders to follow him on Twitter, where he would alert them to, quote, unconscionable actions by boards and discuss what remedies shareholders may take to change the situation. Take heed, all you ordinary Americans out there. Carl Icahn is there for you. Wherever a corporate board hoards cash and wherever a CEO attempts an LBO with a lowball bid, he'll be there. Unless we forget Herbalife, the most wrathful pursuit of all. Yes, fellow citizens, Carl Icahn will be there for you wherever and whenever Bill Ackman is on the other side of the trade. Okay, number four, first solar stupidity. Remember the radio program where Paul Harvey would tell listeners the rest of the story? Well, here's a five dumbest version featuring our friends at First Solar. Back in September 2011, shares of the solar energy provider sank after select analysts were informed it would not seek a federal loan for its massive Topaz project. Because large banks were able to act on the Topaz info prior to the general public, the street reporter Eric Rosenbaum alertly asked whether First Solar had violated the SEC's fair disclosure regulation. So what happened to First Solar in the two years since the street broke the news that First Solar was keeping ordinary investors in the dark? That is, other than the stock going on a roller coaster ride from 80 to 12 to 40? Well, last Friday, the company's former investors relations manager agreed to pay $50,000 to settle SEC charges that he violated Reg FT. And there you have it, dumbest fans, the rest of a very, very dumb story. All right, number three, Rick's appeal. If you ask us, Rick's cabaret CEO, Eric Langen, ought to walk a mile in one of his dancers' four-inch stilettos before whining about paying the minimum wage. A federal judge ruled Tuesday that exotic dancers at Rick's Manhattan Strip Club should be paid a minimum wage, proclaiming that the club unfairly classified them as independent contractors as opposed to employees. Shares of Rick's, which is appealing the decision, sank nearly 2% Wednesday. Said U.S. District Judge Paul Engelmayer, quote, Unlike shoeshine employees at an airport, topless dancers are the main attraction at a topless nightclub and obviously very important to the business of the nightclub. We heartily agree, Your Honor. And we can only imagine the difficulty you faced in visualizing this case, especially when you were forced to examine exhibits A through double D. Okay, number two, over and out. Note to the geniuses at Ova Science. Overlooking the FDA when launching a new drug is generally not an overly keen idea. In fact, it's overwhelmingly dumb. The biotech company's stock was overrun by sellers Wednesday, sinking over 21% to 11 bucks after the company said regulators are inquiring about the status of its fertility treatment, Augment. Put simply, OvaScience neglected to ask the FDA if Augment could be marketed commercially without oversight, and as a result, the FDA shut it down. Or in even simpler terms, OvaScience tried an end around but its FDA overlords put an end to it. And the dumbest thing on Wall Street this week, lamenting Lehman. This weekend is the fifth anniversary of Lehman Brothers filing for bankruptcy. To mark the less than auspicious occasion, here's what Lehman CEO Dick Full told employees in an email after the 158-year-old bank went under. Quote, the past several months have been extraordinarily challenging. For some of you, the firm has been your home for decades, for others, less than a year. For all of us, it has been far more than a place of employment it has been a source of pride. Yes, Dick, you've got plenty to be proud of. There you have it, the five dumbest things on Wall Street this week. We'll see you next week, but for now, thanks for watching.